How does the Aeromed Lab deliver whole blood to soldiers on the battlefield through AI-powered drone? So a lot of you guys know that I'm in Mountain View, California right now. I'm actually flying back out to Maryland uh, in a couple of hours. And I've gotten all these emails like, hey, can I see your pitch deck? What about this with flying the drone? So I figured I'll just do this video in my hotel room uh, to tell you a little bit about the project. And I'll, I'll even show you the actual pitch we did, but let me give you the pitch first, and then I'll, I'll show you the actual pitch we did in front of investors. But if you just want to see me make a fool of myself, you can go to this time up here. It'll be at the end. And uh, if you want to support the Aeromed Lab, you can grab one of these t-shirts from Bunker Branding, or we got hoodies and stickers too. So I'll actually give you the pitch, and it kind of goes like this. You know, what happens when you get shot? When you get shot, hemorrhaging soldiers have about one hour to receive treatment at a field hospital. It's called the golden hour. Current doctrine calls for a helicopter medevac. We get the helicopter to the wounded soldier. We pick them up in the helicopter and we fly them back to a field hospital where they can uh, get trauma care and actually get whole blood. But kind of here's the problem. Medevacs are not going to happen in a large scale war. Medical helicopters are going to be targeted by uh, surface-to-air weapons, by enemy aircraft. Soldiers will die unless they can receive whole blood. This is already happening in Ukraine. There are soldiers who are in the trenches who've been wounded. They cannot get a helicopter in there because Russia will shoot it down. So they have to wait until they can be evacuated by a ground ambulance. And I guarantee you that this will happen in the South China Sea. It is, it is only a matter of time. So how is blood delivered now? Well, it kind of isn't. There, are, there is a program called Walking Blood Bank where uh, you actually, a medic will draw blood out of a soldier who hasn't been wounded and put that in a soldier who has been wounded. A couple of problems with that, it takes time to do and the soldier who just donated blood, you, know, you lose a little bit of blood, you're going to be woozy. That's not the kind of condition we want people to be in when they're in active combat. Plus, you have to take that soldier off the line for a couple of minutes. They could be fighting or defending your position, and you have to draw their blood. So that's one less soldier you have pulling security or fighting. There's also blood thermos bottles. That's mainly used by special forces. Uh, they last about 24 hours, roughly. So it's great if you're a special forces dude and you're on a special forces mission doing special forces things. But for the average infantryman who might be on an island in the South Pacific for weeks at a time, you're not going to be able to keep blood cold. You can also push plasma. That is an option. Plasma is a little bit more stable than whole blood. But um, in reality, plasma doesn't give you all of the benefits of whole blood. And the other option is you die. And that's pretty much what's happening to a lot of soldiers in Ukraine. They do not make it back to the field hospital. So what if we could bring blood to soldiers directly from the field hospital by drone? We can leverage the power of artificial intelligence to navigate in a GPS degraded environment. And we're using inertial navigation, there's a proprietary method, and we're using terrain pattern matching. And we can even throw that blood through a window or behind a wall. And that's really important because where's your casualty collection point? It's not out in an open field, right? If you've taken casualties, odds are you've moved them into a building, you've moved them into a room, you've moved them into a trench line, into a bunker, behind a wall. That's where you're keeping your casualties. So we need to be able to throw that blood over that wall or into that room. And that's a technology that only the Aeromed Lab has. So right now we've completed two different drones. There is a proof of concept and another concept with a soldier-friendly interface. Right now, what we're looking for is help with Project Alpha, which will be a drone that's gonna be made with military parts that will actually be tested in an active theater of war. The growth goals. Uh, we're looking to create a contracting company. We do not want to sell drones to the Army. What we're looking to do is establish contractors that are forward deployed with the Army. They have a pickup truck with a couple of drones on the back of that thing. When they get a, uh, a blood delivery mission, they get the blood from the field hospital. They're parked right next to it. They put the blood on the drone. They fly that out to the battlefield, and then the drone returns automatically. Uh, we're looking at at least five contracts a year because people are constantly deploying to combat zones. 
with a possible value of $125 million. For licensing, we're looking at at least five partnerships a year because the technology that we use to toss this stuff can be used in other applications. Right now, we're really only concerned about blood delivery, but we can license our software. And also, training data. That is one major component. People want all of this data that we're going to be grabbing doing all of these drone flights. So that could be up to about $16 million in value. We do have two competitors, kind of. There's Zipline and Inflection. Uh, Zipline, you've all heard of these drones in Africa that deliver blood, and they're fine. They're great. If you're going to deliver blood in Africa or in an uncontested environment, use Zipline. Do that. <laughs> They're a great company for that, but their drones can't operate in a contested environment where people are actively shooting at them or using electronic warfare to, to get them to fall out of the sky. Inflection is another company. It's sponsored by Microsoft, or the Microsoft has some large investments, but they use a large language model, which really doesn't work with drones, and neither of these two companies can actually use kinetic delivery, meaning actually throw that blood into a window or behind a wall or into a bunker. So the investment goals, we're looking for $1.31 million. This is basically to hire more engineers, uh, gather more military grade materials, facilities, and equipment. Now the common questions that I, that I get when I, when I talk about this to people is, uh, where do you get the blood? Well, that, that's not our problem. That's the Army's problem. The Army Field Hospital has blood refrigerators. They have blood donor programs. If you were deployed, I'm sure you heard over big voice, like, hey, we need anybody with O positive to come to the cache right now, you know, to, to donate blood, right? Because they had a mass casualty event, you know, an IED went off. So we get that from the field hospital. They have refrigerators. We put that on the drone, send that drone out. How do you ensure the type is correct? Again, that's the field hospital. But every person has a, a dog tag with their blood type on it. So the medic sends that information up to the field hospital. The field hospital sends us the blood. Um, if you can't type somebody, then you just give them, you donate O positive. Uh, how do you keep it cold? You can do that with a thermos bottle. Keeping it cold isn't that much of a concern since we're, I mean, it is a concern, but uh, we don't have to have the types of extreme refrigeration that you might see at a hospital because the kinetic delivery, it's, it's gonna take, it, it won't take that long for the drone to get there. So we're thinking uh, a standard thermals, thermal thermos <laughs> would be just fine. Uh, could this be used in Ukraine? Yeah, absolutely. It would be ideal for Ukraine. It would save a lot of lives in Ukraine because right now Ukraine can only activate via ground ambulance when there's a break in artillery fire or when there's a break in, um, you know, in, in troops in contact. Uh, and usually they're going to be evacuating people at night as well, since that's another, another factor that can mask these ambulances. Could this be used in Israel? That, that's, I mean, maybe, I, but I, I don't really see the application because this is designed to be used in a contested environment. And right now Israel has total domination of the electronic warfare spectrum and the air. So Israel should have no problem medevacking people back to the rear. This is designed to be used in a contested environment where electronic warfare is uh, all over the place. You can't get a drone up in the air through conventional means because they're jamming your GPS, they're jamming your drone signal, and um, you can't get a medevac out because it will be shot down. So I don't really necessarily see this as an application for Israel right now, but it could be in the future. Uh, how to organize the logistics. So Aeromed Lab handles all the logistics. We are contractors. We go to where the soldiers are fighting. We set up at the field hospital. We can even push forward a little bit if we need to, like down to the battalion level. Um, and we will deliver that whole blood off the back of this truck. We take care of all the drones. We take care of all the drone parts, all the maintenance. We are not trying to sell drones to the Army. The Army has plenty of drones. And we've all been in the shipping container where you know, at your company where they keep the, the Raven drone, right? And there, nobody knows how to use it and there's not enough parts, right? <laughs> like, and we just keep it in the shipping container because we're afraid we're gonna break it or we're gonna lose it, right? We don't want to sell the Army drones. We are essentially doing saving lives as a service. 
Um, does Signature give away position? I mean, that's a good question, but so does a medevac. A medevac will really give away your position, right? And you can't get it there anyway. So yes, delivering blood to that, to that uh, uh, casualty collection point can give away your position, but that's the trade-off, right? You could even have that drone deliver blood to another location, you don't, and then you could go get it manually. So that would be an option as well. Uh, do you deliver other medical supplies? I mean, theoretically, yeah. You could theoretically put anything on there. We're just concentrating on a whole blood because that's, that's kind of the, the most bang for the buck. Uh, the last question I get is, do you deliver weapons? And the answer to that is no. Like, number one, we are civilian contractors, and as soon as you put a weapon on a drone, now you're, you're no longer subject to the Geneva Convention, right? Because now you have, a, you have an armed drone. We don't want to give anyone any excuse to shoot these drones down whatsoever. So no, we don't put any weapons on our drones. We're just delivering blood. And perhaps in the future, we might deliver other kinds of medical supplies that blood gives us the most bang for the buck. So that, that's the actual pitch. So uh, if, 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 one other thing people have asked me is, oh, can we crowdfund this? Well, I mean, we're looking for $1.31 million. <laughs> that's, that might be a little tough to crowdfund, but... If you, if you want a cool t-shirt or a cool hoodie like I have, go to BunkerBranding.com. We got plenty of them there. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I, uh, I had a, this was a fantastic experience and a fascinating experience uh, coming to Mountain View, California and seeing like all of the other companies that were pitching to these investors. You know, like, oh, we have an AI-powered spoon that lets you know when you're eating too much. <laughs> like, I... I I, I already know what I'm eating too much. It's basically every time I eat, right? All right, so thank you guys for watching. I got to catch a flight back to Maryland. Uh, hey, if you want to support the Aeromed Lab, BunkerBranding.com. And if you want this pitch deck, uh, give me an email. I'll get it to you or I'll get you in touch with the CEO. Oh, yeah, that's one final thing. I actually, I don't own the company. I, uh, I work for the company <clears throat> as their uh, director of integration, which basically means uh, I talk with the soldiers so the developers don't have to. I'm a people person. Why don't you people understand that? So I, when, when it comes to interfacing with the Army or knowing what the average soldier needs, I'm that guy that will work with the Army and work with the developers and get those things ironed out. And when we start to do testing with the Army, I'll be that guy out in the field helping the Army with the testing. So that's kind of my role with the Aeromed Lab. And thank you guys so much for watching. I got to go catch a flight. Tired. I work for the Aero Med Lab. We use AI powered drones to deliver whole blood to wounded soldiers. I want to tell you about what happens when you get shot. Hemorrhaging soldiers have about one hour to receive critical care. It's called the golden hour. Medics don't carry whole blood. That whole blood degrades very, very quickly. It's very temperature sensitive. Current doctrine calls for helicopter medevac. We've all seen in the movies. And even medevac right now. Guess what? You're not getting that medevac. Next slide. In current operational environment, medevac helicopters are getting shot down. Soldiers will die unless they can get that whole blood to them. Right now, as we speak, soldiers in um, Ukraine are bleeding out. Because they can't get a medevac, they can't get the blood. So what if we actually brought the whole blood to the soldier instead of medevac and the soldier back to the field hospital? We can leverage the power of AI to actually navigate a drone in a GPS contested environment. We can even throw that blood through a window or behind a wall where soldiers are taking cover. We can keep them alive until that soldier can get to a ground ambulance. Basically, we're saving lives as a service. Now thus far, we have developed two prototypes to accomplish this. The first one demonstrates the efficacy of the AI. The second one demonstrates the physical feasibility of the drone itself. Now, this is where y'all come in. We're entering our third development cycle with prototype Alpha, and we want this to be our best prototype yet. We want high-grade military equipment, and we want to deploy this to an active theater of war. Now, we have identified three potential streams of revenue. The most obvious of which is contracts with foreign nations. Uh, they pay us to save their soldiers. We also want to license our technology to other companies, and we also want to sell some of the training data that we generate during this process. 
Now we have two competitors, Zipline and Inflection. Zipline uses a dumb AI and the drones are slow, easy to shoot down. Inflection's AI is not suitable for a robotic control problem. We're looking to raise about 1.31 million so that we can afford the better equipment and additional personnel to make this happen. I'm Cody Hatfield, I'm the CEO of Aero Med Lab. This is Ryan McBeth, the CIO. And for us, saving lives is a service. Thank you.